coming up on today's episode of the Salesman Podcast. Will they have as much success? I mean, realistically, if you can get a 1%, 5%, 10% advantage, why wouldn't you? If you're in sales, you're competitive. Hello, Sales Nation. I am Will Barron, and welcome to today's episode of the Salesman Podcast. On today's show, we have Max Altshuler, and we're diving into the sales stack. I'm doing uh, comments here for everyone who's listening to this rather than watching it on YouTube. And yeah, Max gives us a whole list of tools, products, services. Uh, we split it into essentially the bits of the sales funnel, and hopefully, this is a real practical ep- uh, episode, and you'll get a lot out of this if you are looking to kind of improve your sales enablement, uh, make yourself more efficient and things of that nature. You can find out more about Max over at saleshacker.com. His book, Hacking Sales, is available on Amazon. We link to all of it, all the good stuff and all the uh, services and products that we mentioned in this episode as well over at salesman.red forward slash 183. That was a mouthful. And with that all said, let's jump into today's episode. Hey, Max, and welcome back to the Salesman Podcast. Thanks for having me again. (laughs) You're more than welcome. So on today's show, I want to start, and it's going to sound super basic and super simple for people who know a little bit about this, but we'll get deeper by the end of the show, I'm sure, because clearly we're talking about the future of sales here, because we're talking about sales stacks, sales software. And to get us started, Max, for people who are unfamiliar what is or how do you define a sales stack? Yeah, so if you think about your sales process from beginning to end, uh, there's uh, each individual piece of that process um, now has technology that can accelerate that process, enhance that process. Um, you know, so most people have a CRM to keep track of their their leads and their accounts, um, whether it's um, net new pipeline that's coming in or it's people that you've already done business with. Most people have a LinkedIn account. Uh, Maybe they're using that LinkedIn account to, um, you know, prospect on. But I'd say those are the two pieces of technology that most people already know about. You know, obviously you have, um, you know, email and phone, uh, you know, and a computer. But there are a lot of different pieces of technology now that allow you to do things within that that process uh, that have, uh, basically leveraged you know technology or data mining or machine learning or artificial intelligence to enhance that process so <clears throat> if you're sending emails don't just send an email for sales don't just send an email from your inbox send it from something that can track whether or not somebody's opened or applied to that email um, what they clicked on how long they viewed that email for if they're viewing that email right now in real time um, something that you can put together templates in something that you can um, pull in information from, like a dossier on uh, you know, an individual. So for example, I'm writing an email, it'd be really nice to know, you know what the th- last few things they tweeted were or you know, where they went to high school or college that's pulled in from LinkedIn right there in your inbox. There's a lot of technology, technology that's out there that's enhancing uh, things that you might have done in the, pa- in the past to either automate it or accelerate it or um, just make what you're doing, uh, you know, more robust. Mm-hmm. So I want to go through the steps of the sales process in pretty big chunks, to be fair, yeah. and then look at what software and you can name companies and brands, anyone that you yeah. you know think is particularly useful. We can go through that as well. But just to add a bit of context to all <clears throat> of this, right now in the world of sales, in in B two B, perhaps more uh, complex enterprise sales, that side of things, because this is where this is going to be most appropriate. I feel, is it possible? for a, a good salesperson to have success with just Google, email, a phone, and uh, perhaps a pen and paper? Is it still possible for them to succeed yeah. with those tools? Or do we need all this extra stuff uh, added on uh, just to kind of make it possible? It's definitely possible. It's, it's, very, you know, it's very possible. They'll, they'll still have success. Will they have as much success? I mean, realistically, if you can get a 1%, Five percent, ten percent advantage. Why wouldn't you? Um, if you're in sales, you're competitive, right? So, are you really going to sit there and say like, "Oh no, I'm not going to implement this one little thing here or a little thing there to make myself more successful," just because I'm used to the way things 
things are. I'm going to uh, stick with my pen and my paper and not evolve. Uh, you know, if, if I think there was a stat that uh, 40% of the companies on the Fortune 500 in the year 2000 are no longer on the Fortune 500 in the year 2015, 2016. So, you know, if you don't innovate, if you don't adapt and evolve, you're going to be left behind. The people, your, your competitors will. And they'll get the advantage. They'll get the edge. They'll, you know, capitalize on understanding, you know, when somebody looked at your email and then calling them, you know, at that, that moment. Capitalize on those little things that can um, accelerate deals for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's start with the pre or the, I guess, the pre-qualification side of things, the prospecting. And it seems like, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like a lot of technology and a lot of the sales software out there is based in this kind of realm because clearly it's a lot of it's data-led. So what should we, rather, <laughs> I guess 20 years ago, you'd look through the yellow pages and uh, find companies that sounded like they were somewhat appropriate. Then you'd ring a receptionist you try and find out a little bit about them or you'd go on this crappy HTML1 website, which would just be text and some images that would take 15 seconds to load up and it wouldn't be perhaps that useful. Now in 2016, what software and tools should we be do- using to, to prospect more efficiently before we get to the point of contacting them? Yeah, so obviously one of the most powerful ones is LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, they have uh, products that allow you to get um, access to uh, further functionality. So you can uh, build almost like a lead builder. So you go on and you you do like an advanced search and you can say, okay, I want VPs of sales uh, in this location, in this industry, uh, with this company size. And you can pull a list of all these people, um, you know, maybe thousands of people. Um, I could also find out, you know, Who's hiring for sales development reps? So, for example, if I'm on LinkedIn uh, and I go in there and I look at the jobs area and I search sales development, now I know every company that's hiring for sales development. So, if I sell an applicant tracking system or you know something to somebody who's hiring sales development people, if I'm a recruiter, like I already know everybody who's hiring for sales development. So, it's a wealth of like open source information that these people are posting on their behalf. So, almost every time somebody changes a job. The first place you can go to figure out where they went or when they changed their, their job is on LinkedIn. They're posting it voluntarily before it's anywhere else. There are a lot of companies now that are aggregating that kind of data or making it searchable and then surfacing their email addresses like Growbots. There's a company Mattermark. Uh, there are, there's a company Datafox. Uh, there are a lot of companies now that are doing that in a they're you know almost taking LinkedIn offline and saying okay you know we can find all these leads for you we'll also give you email addresses um, so you know there's a lot of companies that are focused on the top of the funnel here on the prospecting side of things there are companies that allow you to to see what um, what companies are using your competitors for example so if you are a marketing automation solution uh, and you want to know who's using HubSpot who's using Marketo, who's using MailChimp. So there's companies that do that. Uh, Data is built with, um, and a couple others uh, intricately that are you know, focused on that part of the funnel. So uh, it's a really interesting time if you're, if you're prospecting. I mean, screw the yellow pages. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they, do they hand those out anymore? Like I've never seen it. I can't remember the last <laughs> time I saw a physical one. But um, there's like such a wealth of information out there on the internet for salespeople to take advantage of, again, not taking advantage of that is like, it's pretty much like not taking advantage of the phone when that was invented. Like, what if you, what if you still were only selling face to face? If you were selling SaaS software face to face right now, you wouldn't really do too well. So, you know, take advantage of the phone, take advantage of email. Why wouldn't you take advantage of the rest of the stuff that's being built? And I still get yellow pages over here in the UK. And literally, it's sat by the fire, and we use it for lighting the coal fire when we when we want to do that on, on the weekend and get the, the place really warm. That's literally yeah. the only purpose it's seen. But people must be taking out ads in it because it still exists. It still must have some. There's no way that it's still supported on cash flow from ten years ago. So that's a Maybe conversation for another time, I guess. If you need a plumber. You know, if you need an electrician locally, if you need a you know a car ride to the airport, 
those are things that I would use, uh, you know, Yellow Pages or Google for. And if maybe I would Google it. I would never use Yellow Pages for them. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's like a handful of, I, I wonder what like the 60 and up dem like demographic looks like in where you live. Like maybe those people are still using mm -hmm. Yellow Pages. Uh, you know, I, my dad still doesn't know how to use a DVD player. And like, we literally went through the entire period of when DVD players were relevant. And he just never, he just never bothered to figure out. He's like, so I, I get it. You know, some people just don't want to, don't want to waste time with the the technology. Uh, either they they don't, they're tech illiterate, or they think it'll mm. like fad out. You know. Well, I've talked about my dad on the show before from this perspective, Max, and he until perhaps like two years ago, he got an iPhone and he didn't. You know, he would complain at us. I've got two younger brothers. We would all be at home and we'd all be sat watching telly, you know, whilst tweeting or whilst doing other things. And he could, he would, he would constantly in barrages and go on about that. He can't understand it. Now, when I go home, he's watching Liverpool uh, football on telly and he's reading about what's going on in real time at the same time with the second screen. He's barely even watching the football anymore. So it is trickling up and it's, you know, uh, yeah. it's going to be a weird place in <laughs> 10 years' time when probably tvs don't even exist it's going to be phones and contact lenses and and god knows what else but keeping on the straight and narrow with the podcast because I, I genuinely could talk about that all day i find it really fascinating yeah. moving on from you've got all this wealth of data now max you've got all these emails uh you know they're verified you've not reached out to them yet are there any uh apps are there any processes or anything you can put in your sales stack to help perhaps qualify these leads other than you going through and going on LinkedIn and trying to suss it out yourself? Is there any way to automate that process a little bit, perhaps? Qualifying the leads? Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of um, predictive analytics tools out there that'll help you understand uh, your low-hanging fruit, so which companies are more likely to buy, depending on either factors that are within your CRM or factors that are within the overall marketplace, um, you know, data lookalike, for example. So, you know, if you close the deal with, HubSpot, Marketo, and Exact Target, you know, are there other marketing automation companies that would be very likely to buy from you? Um, or what are the signals uh, in your CRM for your closed deals that you can kind of relate to potential pipeline? Um, so, you know, are there companies of a certain size that have become like your wheelhouse or of in a certain industry? Uh, is there a person within that company? that is more likely to buy from you than anyone else. That's the person you should be talking to. That's your ideal customer profile basically right there is your low-hanging fruit company and the exact person within that company that you should be talking to. So there are a lot of predictive companies um, that are doing that uh, right now and they're all at you know, kind of different stages and kind of figuring that out as they go. Um, <clears throat> and they're both like in you know, kind of a mix of sales and marketing. Uh, and then the, you know, I like hiring a virtual assistant, so I have virtual assistants in the Philippines that work for about three dollars and fifty cents to four dollars an hour, and uh, they do a lot of research for me. So they'll put together dossiers using, they'll take, you know, advantage of the apps, put those together. There's an app called Charlie App. Um, there's a lot more out there uh, that you can use to Inside View is another one that you can use to get as much information as possible on these leads before. You reach out to them, and you can understand. I mean, <clears throat> traditionally they had this thing called BANT: budget, authority, need, and timing. And that was your little checklist, right? So you wanted to see if they had enough money to buy it. You wanted to see if you're speaking to the right person who can make that decision. You wanted to see if there was uh, a need for it, and then if there was urgency, if they, you know, if they needed it and they needed it now. Um, you could do a lot of that through open source information uh, more than ever before. So um, even looking at you know whether somebody just changed a job and became a you know um, a VP of sales. New people buy new things. If you're selling to sales, that could be interesting. Um, that's kind of like a telltale sign. If they just raise funding, maybe they have money for it now. Maybe there's an article, a press release. Um, I was working with a company uh, a few years ago, and a press release surfaced, and uh, it was the VP of digital initiatives for Dell saying that they were going to double their spend on social. Um, in you know, two, I think it was like 2013, and I was like, "This is as pre-qualified as qualified <laughs> as it gets." I mean, I literally just told you the person this is a VP level guy, so you had the authority, 
He's got the budget, the need and the timing are right there in the article. So if you follow this information, you set alerts on some of your biggest accounts, um, you could find, you can surface um, and pre-qualify people in that in the surfacing of that information. Um, more information is at your fingertips than ever before as a salesperson. Um, I'd say that's equally true, at, at, you know, as a buyer. But that almost doesn't matter for the salesperson. Like, use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One, try and dictate what they see so that information is out there for them. And then two, you have you have the ability to do so much more research than ever before. Like, if you can't pre-qualify someone, then it's probably not low-hanging fruit. Um, and that'll take a lot more time. But, you know, there is a lot of low-hanging fruit out there. So depending on the company size um, and depending on, you know, how big your you know, your serviceable market is, um, that's who you should be going after first. Mm -hmm. And I should say, Max, that <coughs> as for the audience, everyone who's listening, I will link to all of these uh, companies and products in the show notes page of this. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's going to be an absolute mess of people going back and forth trying to suss it all out. And Every time I do a talk, everybody's like, whoa, can you slow down? Can you tell <laughs> yeah. me? Okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll put it in. Um, if you need any help getting the links, yeah, just let me know. Good man. And there's two things I want to dive into here. The VA side of things, that is super important and perhaps something that's going to change and evolve in sales. Uh, so we'll come on to that in a second. But firstly, do you find and do you feel that this trend to put more and more data online, both in our personal lives and our business lives, do you think that's going to continue? And if so, how do you see all this changing within the next three or four years when perhaps almost every single thing you do is almost going to be live streamed. Yeah. So obviously it's not going to change anytime soon. I think we're going to keep putting that information out there. Um, I don't, I don't see how, I don't see how it doesn't get better. Frankly. I mean, at some point, if I can pre-qualify people like to buy from people, which is why there are salespeople, but we're almost at a point now where it's like the best, the best product for you just connects. And you see that in consumer goods. Like you used to have to go to Best Buy and talk to a sales rep and like talk about these TVs. Now I could just go on Amazon and click five star, the size I want, and maybe I already know a brand, so the brand I want. And like the TV's there, I buy the TV. You know, that's a seven or eight hundred dollar purchase. You used to have to go to the store, you talk to the sales rep. Now it's just like, oh, I know what I want. Here it is, I can rely on customer reviews. You know, at some point, more and more things are going to go in that direction. I still believe people buy from people, but we definitely make it more complicated than it needs to be. And so, all of this information that's out there on the internet, um, the more of that that there is, the easier it'll it'll be to just buy the right thing for you, because all those things will kind of connect. Companies are creating things that aggregate that data, and you know. Personalized recommendation for your company. They have all the information about your company. They have all the information about what's out there. You know, let's connect the two best things. There's a company called G2 Crowd that's out there that's aggregating software reviews. Um, so almost like no matter what industry you're in, um, the data is the reviews from other people and the information that's out there. And you know, I believe people buy from people, but they still want to do a lot less work um, in most cases. So yeah, it depends on the, the size of the deal and what you're selling. Obviously, if you're selling six, seven figure contracts, you're going to deal with a lot of people still. But I'd say on the, on the, the smaller end, you're going to start seeing a lot more of that information surfacing and people aggregating it in a way that makes it you know, actionable for sales. And, um, and that's pretty cool, but you know, we'll see where it goes. LinkedIn was in an interesting uh, place before they got acquired, everybody's putting their data up on LinkedIn for free and they're a social network, right? But they're also selling your data. They mm -hmm. are a, technically they are a CRM or a lead gen source because one of their main products are those sales and recruiting tools that allow people to pay, you know, 500 to $1,000 or whatever a year and they can buy access to searching the entire database to go out and get your data. They don't get contact information until they connect with you, then they get access to your email address. But it's very easy to pull contact information from LinkedIn if you use some of these other tools. There's a tool called Capture by Ringlead that you know, 
anytime you see a name in a company on the internet, you can basically like have this Chrome extension that allows you to pull an email address. Um, so it doesn't even even really matter whether LinkedIn allows it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to make a decision, I think, whether they were going to be a B two B product or a social network. Because I don't think it can be both. Looking forward in perhaps five, ten years' time, do you see or do you think that people will become less responsive to outbound sales? Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, very specifically, B two B sales. You know that your product is right for a prospect. Do you think it's going to get harder and harder to get in contact with them? They're going to become less and less responsive, and more deals on the percentage-wise will come in from inbound leads from marketing as opposed to the salesperson being calling and and going after new new sales themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the trend is that things have been going towards inbound, um, and that's been that's been working really well. I think that. Uh, People need an education in most of these spaces. So I know, you know, I can speak from a SaaS sales perspective that SaaS is still really in the early stages of its lifespan. I mean, you know, if we're talking, um, you know, if we're talking baseball, maybe it's in the second or third inning or something like that. But um, it's all about education right now. And so you are, you're, as a salesperson, you're an educator. You're educating them on, on, that there is a market there in some cases if they don't even know that this is if you're creating like a product category in other cases you're create you're educating them on you know what your product can do um, why you're better than the competitors um, why you can help them solve their problem they might not even know they have that problem because they basically don't know that a solution exists so they pretty much just put up with it and they're like oh we can you know we can deal with this until you tell them that you can save their you know their reps 10% of their time or something like that. And because of this ability to outreach and explain and do this um, education process, will there always be outbound sales or will that just get to a point where it's not worth the, the money that you put into it from a business perspective? Eventually there won't be, I think. But like five or 10 years, no, there'll still be a lot of outbound sales. I mean, I, I, would, I could definitely see a world in which there's pretty much no sales in general, but that could be, you know, 50 to 100 years away when literally it's a plug going into a socket. I need this and the literally the best possible thing for me just connects. We are we are getting so advanced in the technology that I I find it hard to believe that that's like not ever going to happen. But in the short term, especially with the bigger deals, yeah, there's always going to be a need for outbound, you know, in, in the next 5 or 10 years. I think that companies are doing better and better jobs at, at running the inbound, you know, playbook and educating the market. And you're seeing uh, you're seeing those companies be really successful. You look at a company like Slack, 65 million in uh, in ARR in two years. That's unheard of. That's insane. Yeah, they're like they call it yeah, a unicorn. They're you know it's an anomaly, but um, it's possible. And they figured out a B to C to B model. Um, where their entire sales process is inbound. They don't need to go search. And there's companies in that space like Trello and Atlassian that have built their sales the same exact way. So, you know, maybe it's a category or maybe it's the start of a trend. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for the, definitely for the smaller deals, I think you'll see a lot more inbound working there um, as people start to figure it out, uh, as the market becomes more educated, um, and you know, if, if we're talking strictly SaaS here, uh, you know, yeah, I definitely see it trending towards inbound at a certain point. But I don't think outbound's going anywhere for, you know, at least a decade or two. <laughs> Good. Well, I think if we're still in this conversation in fifty or hundred years, and we've not been hit by an asteroid, blowing each other up with nukes or whatever else yeah, exactly. weapons that we don't know exists, and or you know, AI robots or the Terminator's been sent back in time to kill us all. I think we're doing well enough. And we really do have bigger problems than like figuring out if outbound is going to exist in 50 years. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, 10 years perhaps because you're still going to pay your mortgage, but 50 yeah. is, is a different conversation. Yeah. Moving on to closing now, Max. So uh, thinking about this, the only tool I can think of at the top of my head is the ability to track emails, know when they're open, and then be able to act in, on real time uh, from that perspective and, and engage with the prospect and, and close when they're engaged. Are there any other tools or services that we can use to improve and in- increase our ability to close customers? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, pipeline health 
uh, type companies out there that allow you to you know see where people are in the cycle, um, people you've already engaged with, like you know Data Hug um, is one that comes to mind that allows you to see kind of where in the in the process people are, um, how engaged they are, um, how engaged your reps are, so making sure that they're following up, things like that. Um, you know, it's amazing how many people will let a, a deal go stale, you know, just for lack of not following up, you know, or, you know, discouragement, but not getting, not getting the no. I mean, no, so the, there's a saying, no is the second best answer when it comes to sales. Um, it's almost actually when, when it comes to anything, uh, at least you know mm -hmm. that it's a no and you can move on. Um, and you want to get to that almost as fast as possible. So there's a lot of technology that allows you to see kind of like the health of your pipeline, the health of your individual deals. Um, and that is, you know, fantastic. There's obviously um, companies like Tinderbox uh, and, you know, ClearSlide and others that allow you to see how long prospects have been looking at proposals for or all sorts of documents, um, you know, legal docs, what have you. But those are those are you know amazing tools also for basically transparency and visibility from a salesperson's perspective. I want to know if this person opened the document that I sent them. They they put you know I put together a proposal. They opened it up. They looked at it for 15 minutes, and 12 minutes of it was on the pricing page. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, or 10 minutes of it was on like this one little you know pain point area that I didn't think was a big deal, <laughs> but it turns out it is. And that visibility is key for driving that deal along. So um, as far as like closing the deal software goes, um, I don't know that anything is going to help you, you know, get ink to paper that isn't, you know, that isn't like an echo sign or a DocuSign type thing. But there are, there are companies that are in there that will help you facilitate deals to close um, that are after, that are post-pipeline, that are, that are, you know, you're in the cycle. You're in the sales cycle, you're engaged, and um, these things will help you uh, take it to the finish line. And last one, and I'm, I'm keen not to interrupt you here because th mm -hmm. there's loads more to go at, but I'm of conscious course. of time. Are there any f software external, because like, a lot of companies have their own internal solution to this, but is there any software you can re recommend to help with the process of gathering referrals after everyone's happy Delivery has been a huge success, and uh, you know you've got that rapport and that relationship to ask for it. There's a company called Influitive that does uh, customer advocacy. Um, I think there are a couple others in the marketplace. It's a pretty new category. Um, you know that could be that could be done as a a program that you run through your you know sales acceleration tool. But yeah, I mean I, I think that Influitive would do a pretty good job at that. Uh, there's probably a couple others in the marketplace if you look up. And fluid of competitors, but um, you know that's that's something you should definitely be doing, and it's something that's you know it's fairly straightforward. Nice. And Max, I've got I've got one question. I obviously ask everyone that comes on the show. You've asked answered it before, so I'm going to twist it around a little bit. Go for it. If you could sit down with one on one, you know, unlimited time with the ten to fifteen thousand people that listen to this show right now. And you could give them one single bit of advice that you think could carry across every sales rep who's listening. What would that one piece of sales advice be? Wow, put me on the spot. Um, what would my one piece of sales advice be? I would say uh, right now there's so much information being shared from peer to peer in the sales world. So soak up as much information as you can from people who are sharing. Uh, I think I read a, a quote, came across it the other day. Um, smart people learn from other smart people. Um, average people learn from their experiences and dumb people just never learn. Um, so if you're, if you're smart and you, you want to get ahead, yeah, you can learn from your experiences. That's, that's great. But you want to sit on the shoulders of giants. Learn from other VPs of sales in the industry. Learn from your own VP of sales. Pick their brain. Go to them and, and um, you know, make sure you're soaking up everything you possibly can. Uh, go read books that are coming out right now. It's, it's easier than ever for anyone to, to publish a book, which is kind of a negative when it comes to there's a lot of noise and crap out there. But it's also amazing because it allows people to, that are really knowledgeable to get out there and not need a publisher and get out there pretty quick about it. So 
There's a lot of great sales books that have come out recently. There's a lot of great sales publications out there. Uh, there's a lot of good groups on LinkedIn and forums that you can jump into. But go and soak up knowledge and learn from others and, and you know, sit on the shoulders of giants. Don't just learn from your experiences. Um, try and get ahead. Try and soak up all the knowledge that's out there because it is out there. And we just, you know, we spoke about um, this kind of wealth of information, you know, because, you know, that's happening on the internet. Well, well that's some of it. And so uh, go take advantage of it. Amazing stuff. Uh, Max, for everyone who's intrigued to learn more about you and everything that you do, and perhaps they want to come to your events and exchange information peer to peer with their colleagues and people who are motivated to go to an event such as yours. Uh, and yeah. of course, get in front of the, the leaders in the industry, the thought leaders and those practitioners. Where can we find out more about all that, what you've got coming up and uh, about you as well? Yeah, so saleshacker.com is our site. It's got all the content on it uh, that we put out, webinars, articles. Um, and then we have our upcoming conference in San Francisco, October 26th and 27th, called Sales Stack. We put it on last year, all about sales technology, um, efficiency, and effectiveness. So uh, not only embracing the technology and how to leverage it, but also um, training so that when you do, uh, you don't waste it. You actually know what you're doing. And... Um, and really get the most out of you know your investment both in your team and the technology. So that's sales stack October 26th, 27th in San Francisco. Um, I'll be speaking on a panel with three others at Dreamforce's sales summit run by their sales cloud um, focused on kind of the future of sales technology which is going to be really interesting because we have a machine learning uh, company there. We have a data, deep like data analytics company and a natural language processing company and focused on we got some, you know, some bots in there. It's going to be really cool. So, uh, if you're at Dreamforce Tuesday, October fourth, come to that. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at Max Alts, M A X A L T S, and then my book, Hacking Sales, on Amazon. Good stuff. We'll link to all Lots that in the show stuff. notes. Uh, we'll link yeah. to all the companies, which is going to take me about four hours to put together. But I think this could be a really good resource, the show notes page for this episode, for yeah. the, as a snapshot in time of this moment of where salespeople and sales leadership should be looking to improve the efficiency of their sales teams. And with that, Max, thank you for your insights as always. And thank you for your time. And thank you for joining us on the Salesman Podcast. Definitely. Thanks for having me. And there we have it, Max. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time, Sales Nation. Uh, I say this every episode, but I really appreciate your time, your attention, and the, the real community that's forming around the show. I, I you know, I'm, I'm constantly uh, making note of who's sharing what, how often it's being shared, and and you know, good things will come to those people who help out the show. I can tell you that for nothing. If you haven't already, it's well worth checking out Bob's show, which aired yesterday, where he essentially turns a lot of common wisdom in sales up onto its head. And uh, yeah, I don't, I didn't agree with everything that he said, but a lot of it is super powerful and it's super useful in certain scenarios. So you can check that out over at salesman.red forward slash 182. And with that, I'll speak with you all again tomorrow. 